Hello, my name is Pastor Kyron Schultz, and I am so glad to be with you this morning here at Hedo Discovery Online. We are in week three of our series called Foundations, the Basics of Our Faith. This series coincides with our students who are also in week three of Confirmation, and we will be celebrating with them as they say yes to God and yes to the church on May 21st, so make sure that you join us for that special Sunday. As our confirmands are learning about the foundations of our faith, we will be too. We're talking through what we believe as United Methodists about the Bible, about God, about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and grace. And as we do, we'll see how what we believe about these things impact our lives. Of course, our hope for this series and all of our series is that you have a clearer and better understanding of what it means to be a follower of Christ as a United Methodist, and how each one of these things that we believe helps us become better humans, better believers, and a better community together. Our scripture this week comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe <laughs> Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Okay, so today we are looking at what we believe about Jesus and how our belief in Jesus helps us build a foundation for our faith. So if you want to know anything and everything there is to know about being United Methodist, you could read our book of discipline. <laughs> it's a really great book that has a lot of interesting stuff in it. But one of the things that it talks about is our statement of faith. And it talks about what we believe about the things that we are talking about in this series, about God, the Bible, Jesus. And this is what our statement of faith says about who Jesus is to us. It says this, we believe in Jesus Christ, truly God and truly man, in whom the divine and human natures are perfectly and inseparably united. He is the eternal word made flesh, the only begotten Son of the Father, born of the Virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
as ministering servant, he lived, suffered, and died on the cross. He was buried, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven to be with the Father, from whence he shall return. He is eternal Savior and mediator who intercedes for us, and by him all men will be judged. Our belief in Jesus comes from what Scripture says to us about him. We talked about that on the very first week, how we use the Bible to build our foundation. Through all four Gospels, we see the story of where Jesus came from. We see the story of what he did while on earth with us. We see his death on the cross, and we read the miraculous story of his resurrection. But more than all of that, we see Jesus' own statements about himself. And that's what we're going to focus on today. We see in the Gospel of John that Jesus makes seven I am statements. One of them is in our scripture reading for today. But I'd like to start chronologically. And so we're going to begin in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus says to us, I am the bread of life. When we think of Jesus as being our bread, we may think about how bread sustains us, how we rely on food to survive physically. And so when Jesus is saying to us that he is the bread of life, we understand that to mean that he is what we need for our lives, not physically, but spiritually. We have confidence that when we use the example of Jesus as a way to live our own lives, then we will be sustained and cared for. It's so interesting to me that Jesus made this statement shortly after feeding the 5,000. He said this I am statement in response to people requesting more food. And Jesus didn't want to only fill their stomachs. In fact, Jesus really wanted people to see that physical hungry, hunger is only temporary, just like our life here on earth. But that life with Jesus is forever. Jesus being the bread of life means that he provides us life, eternal life. In John chapter 8, verse 12, we see that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Jesus made this statement during a Jewish festival called the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, during this festival, a big candle was lit in the women's section of the temple to remind the Israelites of the pillar of fire that guided their ancestors into the wilderness. We see Jesus making this statement right after forgiving, not condemning, a woman who was caught in adultery. By saying, I am the light of the world, we see that Jesus offers light, he offers goodness, he offers forgiveness to all of us who sin. Jesus' light contrasts, contrasts the darkness. Jesus shines brighter than anything that we could ever imagine. In John chapter 10, there are two I am statements that go together. In verse 7, Jesus says, I am the gate. Some translations say the door of the sheep. And the second is in verse 10, when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. These statements were made during an argument that Jesus was having with Israel's religious leaders. And by saying these two statements, Jesus was basically saying that those religious leaders were really unfit shepherds of the Israelites. Scholars believe that shepherds during this time would guide their flocks into stone enclosures each night to protect them from predators. But these stone structures had no doors, and so the shepherd would sit or lie in the opening to prevent things getting inside and attacking the flock. When we see Jesus saying, I am the gate, we see that he means he is lying between us as the sheep and evil, the predators. And when he follows that statement up with, I am the good shepherd, it reinforces to us what we already know. Jesus loves us so much that he would give up his life for us. 
Jesus is describing in these I am statements his sacrificial love for us, that he will not abandon us, and that he will watch over us consistently. The next I am statement comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. We, of course, have a better understanding of this I am statement than the first people who heard it did. We find this statement made in response to Martha's grief that her brother and Jesus' friend Lazarus is dead. As Martha was telling Jesus about his friend, you can hear the despair, the hopelessness, the finality that Martha is feeling, much like we do when someone who we love passes from this life. When we hear Jesus say that he is the resurrection and the life, we understand that this statement reflects the hope that we have in the afterlife. We understand that Jesus himself conquered the grave through resurrection so that we could be free from our own sin and live forever with Jesus in heaven. So I'm going to skip the next I am statement and come back to it because for us, I really think it should be the last one, in my opinion, um, and I'd like to use it to wrap us up about what we believe about Jesus. So we're going to skip chapter 14 and move into chapter 15, verse 1. When we see Jesus say, I am the true vine. Have you noticed that a lot of Jesus' stories revolve around agriculture? (laughs) This is because the people that he was talking to during his time on earth would have a very clear understanding of farming or ranching, uh, of fishing. And so he told his stories in a way that held meaning to the people. Like, I think if Jesus were to come back today, he'd probably have to get a TikTok account in order for young people to understand where he's coming from. (laughs) So Jesus says in this verse, I am the true vine. For the people he was talking to, not only did they understand what it meant as um, they would have probably worked or known people who worked in the vineyards, but they also would have recognized that the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament would have mentioned the Israelites being part of God's vine, And so this reference as a whole would have been very familiar to them. In the Gospel of John, Jesus has told this to his disciples as they were sharing the Last Supper in the upper room on the night of his arrest. What he is saying here with the statement, I am the true vine, he is saying that we then are the branches and that we must abide in or dwell in or attach ourselves to Christ And then we enable his life to flow in us and through us. If we are with Jesus, then we will bear fruit that will honor God. So as Jesus said, I am the true vine, he is saying that we should stick close to him. And through that, we will be able to accomplish God's desire for us. So like I said before, the last I am statement we're going to talk about today comes from John 14, 6. And it's part of our scripture reading today. And in my opinion, out of all the I am statements that there are, this one defines perfectly what we, as United Methodists, believe about who Jesus is. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So before he says this, we know that Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet. They have eaten their last meal together. Jesus has told them there is a betrayer among them. Jesus has also told his disciples that he would be leaving and that they could not go with him. Peter was confused. He didn't understand, and neither did Thomas. We see in our scripture that Thomas says, Lord, we don't even know where you're going, so how could we know the way? And that's when Jesus makes this I am statement. I am the way, he says. We interpret this to mean that he is the way to heaven, the only way. Jesus was making sure that he was crystal clear to his disciples and to us that there is no other way to eternal life. We must confess that Jesus is our Savior, that Jesus is the only way to forgiveness, 
and that he proved that to us by his sacrifice of life on the cross. The statement was significant to those of Jesus' day who were trying to gain access to God's favor through the law and their good works. And it is still significant to us today because we are surrounded by so many beliefs and religious religions claiming access to God and a way to earn God's favor and eternal life apart from Jesus alone. But we know that Jesus is the way. And after he says that he is the way, he says, and the truth. When we hear this statement, we are once again reminded that Jesus is God in human form. He is the truth. What we hold true and what we hold to know about God. Jesus is good. Jesus is trusting and faithful. Jesus is love. And Jesus is our truth, what we believe as part of our faith as United Methodists. And finally, Jesus says that he is the life. Jesus is our life. Jesus models what our lives should be like. Jesus gave up his life for each one of us so that we could experience a love like no other love. In these seven extremely bold I am statements, Jesus wasn't just exercising positive self-talk. He was letting the first century Jews, who were very familiar with God's definition of himself, know that he was truly God incarnate, that he was the Messiah they had been waiting for, that he was the most high God in the flesh. In fact, we know that because he made these statements about himself, that it was used as the excuse to have him crucified. Jesus fulfilled and affirmed many Old Testament or Hebrew Bible prophecies about himself through these statements. And I think it's important to consider that he knew who he was, and he wanted us to clearly understand that too. Jesus used different ways to define himself so that we can see him as our daily sustenance, the bread of life. We can see him as our direction, the light of the world, that we can see Jesus as our protector, being the gate and the good shepherd, that he is our sacrificial savior through his resurrection, that he is our strength and vitality as the true vine, and finally, that he is our victory over death and our access to God and eternal life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus was not only a great teacher. Jesus was not only a miracle worker. Jesus was not just our savior, but Jesus was the great I am. Jesus was God in the flesh who became our model, our hope, our strength, our salvation. As we close this time together learning about who Jesus is to us as United Methodist, let us also remember to experience Jesus today. Jesus made these statements over 2,000 years ago, and I guarantee you some of our confirmands are saying 2,023 years ago exactly, <laughs> but they still hold true today. Through our understanding of who Jesus was and who Jesus still is, we are offered the experience of freedom in Christ. We can still find ways to share Jesus with others, and we can still hold fast to the promise of eternal life through him. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you that you came down in human form to live among us, to teach us, and to show us the way. God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. And we thank you for all of the different ways that Jesus shows us who he is through scripture, through people, and through us. We love you, God. Amen. Hey, y'all. It's Pastor Johnny. Thanks for joining us today at Huddle Discovery Online. 
Be sure to drop a comment down below. Let us know you're here. And if you're so inclined, share this video. We love it when you share your church with your friends. And be sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you stay notified when new content drops. If you're just checking us out today, we'd love to invite you to worship with us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. here at Huddle Discovery United Methodist Church. Also, be sure that you're signed up for our email newsletter so that you can stay up to date with all that's going on in the life of the church and find out how you can get involved. If there's any way myself or Pastor Kyron can connect with you this week, click the connection link in the description of this video. Whether you have questions about the church, membership, baptism, small groups, youth, or children, if you have a prayer request or you'd like to find out uh, how to serve or whatever it is, let us know. We'd love to connect with you. And finally, if you have an offering that you'd like to give to the church today, visit our website at huddodiscovery.org slash give. There you can give digitally, a one-time gift, or set up a reoccurring and automated offering. You'll also find their information to mail in your offering if you prefer that. Grace and peace, y'all. See you again soon.